When I started 3D printing over 12 years ago, we really only had ABS filament. That's what everyone used. Now there's all kinds of different filaments, textures, colors. So which filaments are best for a beginner to start with? Well, there's really five main categories that I think you should look at. So let's talk about it on today's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PLA filament or polylactic acid filament is the beginner's best friend and frankly most people never need another type of filament. It prints at temperatures of 190 to 220 degrees C typically which is easy for almost any 3D printer. It sticks to just about any build plate and doesn't warp unless you're really unlucky or your build plate has a bunch of finger marks on it. The oils from your fingers cause more bed adhesion problems than probably any other issue. Clean the bed with soapy water, make sure it's dry, and PLA will easily stick to your heated bed. I typically use 60 degrees C for the bed. So let's look at the pros and cons of PLA. First of all, it is incredibly easy to print, offers lots of colors and blends, has a great surface finish, and it's very affordable and available everywhere. What's the cons? Weak at high temperatures, such as inside a car, PLA will not hold up, it'll melt. Here you go, here's the PLA one, and it's so squishy. It's also very brittle compared to other filaments. Now its best use cases are decorative objects around the house, prototypes of something before you print it in the real plastic you're going to use, cosplay pieces, little pieces you can put on you know, helmets or uh, display pieces on your costume, or any low stress mechanical parts. So if you're brand new to 3D printing, start with PLA. It'll teach you the basics without major frustration. Now there's also a PLA Plus, or sometimes called Tough PLA. It's basically PLA with additives to improve toughness. Some brands add impact modifiers or small amounts of other polymers. This makes it less brittle and slightly stronger, but despite those modifiers, PLA Plus typically prints just as easy as any standard PLA. So it's great for phone stands, RC car shells, because it can handle the impact. Light mechanical parts, like I mentioned PLA, well, it's actually better for those PLA pluses. And hobby projects that need durability, but not heat resistant. It's still not the best for heat resistance. If PLA breaks too easily for you, but you don't want to print another filament and learn a whole new set of headaches, PLA plus is your logical next choice. The next popular filament is PETG, or PETG as some call it. It stands for polyethylene terephthalate glycol modified. Now, that's a mouthful, but basically it's just a variation of the same plastic used in water bottles, but with glycol added to make it easier to 3D print. PETG sits between PLA filament and ABS filament, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, in terms of difficulty to print and strength. Now it's stronger and more impact resistant than PLA. It's more temperature resistant. And what about the PET? Maybe a little bit more flex, but really I can't tell any difference there. It can be semi-flexible, so it won't shatter like brittle, brittle filaments, so it's good for like living hinges. It's low warping compared to ABS filament, and it's great for functional parts like jigs or fixtures, mechanical brackets, or even outdoor projects. It is slightly more challenging than PLA to print, but still pretty much beginner friendly. PETG typically prints in the 230 to 250 degrees C range. Bed temperatures are recommended like 70 to 90 degrees C, although some will say less. Also, it doesn't like drafts, so you don't have to put it in a chamber type printer, but keep it away from drafts like out in a garage. PLA loves drafts, PETG does not. And reduced cooling works best with PTG. It likes to stay warm a little bit longer. So cooling fans, reduce those down a little bit. And also moderate speeds. Don't go too fast because what will happen is it will print, but you'll get more stringing. Now PTG can actually stick too well on smooth build plates. 
like a smooth PEI plate, it can actually stick too good that you got to break it off from the bed. So some people recommend a release agent like a glue stick on first and then print on that. But I found a textured PEI plate actually works better. So you still get the PEI features, but it's textured so there's air gaps in there so you can actually break this thing loose. You don't get the smooth finish, but it's easier to take off the bed. PETG is ideal when PLA or even PLA plus isn't durable enough, but you don't want to go to ABS, which we'll talk about. So outdoor brackets or mounts, functional mechanical parts again. PETG is good for printer mods, like a handle for your 3D printer. Drone parts, a lot of people use PETG for that. Load bearing prototypes, so something that's actually got load on it. Tool handles, knobs, jigs, fixtures, all perfect for PETG. ABS filament was where we all started. That was the first 3D printing filament that most of us use. There's also an ASA, which is very similar to ABS, but is more UV resistant. So we've kind of moved from ABS to ASA, but let's talk about ABS first. ABS is a strong impact resistant plastic and handles high temperatures pretty well, but it does love to warp or crack during 3D printing. It's also pretty famous as the plastic used in Lego blocks. ABS can also be smoothed after it's 3D printed with an acetone vapor. So you put acetone in a jar of the vapor that's come off of it, put the 3D print in there, and it'll actually soften the outer shell and it'll smooth it. ABS is strong and impact resistant and it can withstand high heat. So it's good for like automotive parts or functional tool parts or even high temperature mechanical components that are gonna take an impact. ASA can do the same thing. The problem with ASA or ABS is both of them can warp without an enclosure. You need an enclosure to trap the heat so it doesn't wanna warp off the bed. ABS and also ASA somewhat, they both emit fumes that you don't wanna breathe. So you wanna print in a well ventilated area or have some kind of filter system. Both ABS and ASA tend to want a higher temperature range of nozzle, 260 to 300 degrees C to melt it, and a heated bed of around 90 to 100 degrees C. Some say 110 is a minimum. Now many people have switched over to ASA, but I do find ABS filament pretty cheap sometimes. TPU and other flexible filaments are another popular category. TPU stands for thermoplastic polyurethane, but all of these materials behave like rubber when they're cool, but can be melted and extruded like plastic on a 3D printer. So TPU is most commonly used flexible filament 3D printing because it is elastic, it's tough, it's abrasive resistant, and it's easy to print compared to other rubber type materials. TPUs often come in different hardness ratings. There's a shore rating, which will tell you whether it's hard or softer. So like a TPU 95A, it's easier to print because it's kind of firm, kind of like a car tire tread. Then there's TPU 85, which is very flexible, kind of like a, a soft phone case. Tool grips, and actually just any kind of grip. I put one on a walking stick that I still use to this day. It's lasted for years. TPU sticks to build plates sometimes too well. So a textured PEI plate is often better than a smooth PEI plate for TPU. TPU also can absorb moisture. And when it does, it becomes stringy, bubbly, and consistent. So you may have to dry your TPU before printing. Leaving it on the shelf in a open space, I guarantee you, you're gonna have TPU that won't print right. Now, TPU doesn't need anything special. A nozzle 220 to 245 degrees C, bed 40 to 60 degrees C, Chamber not required. You don't have to have an enclosed chamber. You just need to print a little bit slower, which is one of the drawbacks. Nylon and polycarbonate are filaments that come up once in a while, but I don't recommend them for beginners. You require very high temperatures. They're tough to print, and you really need a high-end printer like a Prusa Pro HT90 or a Bamboo Lab X1E. For this type of material, nylon or polycarbonate, I highly suggest you consider using PCBWay.com instead of a home 3D printer. 
PCBWay is my go-to for low-cost circuit boards. In fact, I just received a new batch of Chapino module boards with red solder mask to replace the green I've used in the past. But PCBWay also offers 3D printing services. And nylon and polycarbonate are two options that they offer. You just have to upload your .stl file and you can see it in their 3D viewer and look at your, make sure everything's right. Then you can get a quote for one or more of the 3D prints. And you can print your design in PLA, PTG, at home to make sure you get the sizing right and then order the nylon version or polycarbonate version from PCBWay. It's definitely a route I would take if I needed that type of print material because it would save me a lot of time and money in the long run. There are some exotic or specialty filaments that you can get and oftentimes they're just PLA with additives. Carbon fiber PLA or PTG is an additive that makes a print stiffer, but it's abrasive. It will eat away at your nozzle, so it's recommended to use a hardened steel nozzle when you print with it. Wood filled filaments, typically PLA, have actual wood pieces in them. They smell nice when they print. They can actually sand, but they can be a bit stringy, but I love wood filament a lot. This is one of my favorite filaments. The fact that you can lightly sand it and then stain it like wood makes for some really interesting projects. If you're into woodworking and need some detailed trim pieces, 3D printing with wood filament might be a great option for you. Metal filled filaments can be really interesting. There's a lot of different brands out there. When you print something, it can actually come out really heavy. It surprised me one time. I printed a Statue of Liberty wasn't real, real big, but man, it was heavy. I turned it into a paperweight for my desk. I lost it in a move, so otherwise I'd show it here, but that I would try to print again. But I've printed other copper items, and I've printed pieces for an electric motor that actually had a magnetic property to it. So it had some metal in there, some iron that made it magnetic. So there's so many, I, this is a separate video in itself, but metal filled filaments, I think, can be a lot of fun to play with. And be, if you're really creative, you can make some really great 3D prints. So to summarize, here's a guide to help you choose what 3D print filaments to use. If you're just starting out, start with PLA or PLA+. If you need durability but easy printing, PETG. Outdoor part, ASA or PETG is recommended. Flexible part, TPU. High strength, nylon or PC again, I recommend PCBWay.com. Although I should mention that Prusa recently announced an upgrade to the Prusa Core 1. It's a high temp nozzle that can go up to 400 degrees C. Once you're comfortable 3D printing, try those unique parts like wood filament and metal filament. Could be a lot of fun. So if you're new to 3D printing, hopefully this helped you. If you've been using PLA and want to move to something else, hopefully I help you there too. Those who are experienced, I'm sure I didn't cover every filament. Let me know what you guys are using in the comments below. I want to give a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Without your support, this channel would not happen. Thanks for watching. And here's a few other videos you might like. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon's the best way to do it. And if nothing else, click on that logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollabuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.